In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can manipulate and automate Excel work using Python. So we're gonna be using pandas. Now, the reason for that is because that although you can use other libraries to sort of manipulate the Excel files as you go, I much prefer to import the whole thing into pandas into a data frame that we can then do whatever we need to do with and then export it in. So we're gonna import it, manipulate and mess with it in pandas and then export it using pandas again to our desired format after we've done everything that we want. So if we head over to my screen, we'll see that I have some data up here. Um, there's columns. This is actually a CSV file, but I'll show you how to import if, if as if it was an XLSX as well. Um, and this has some various columns that you might expect to see. Uh, this is kind of like a maybe a order sheet where you've got a size, a quantity, the price, some address data, etc., etc. So what we're going to do in this is we're going to be manipulating this file and I have another one which is very similar and I'll show you how to work with them together. So this is actually a CSV. So to start working with this, I'll make this one bigger so we can actually all see. We need to import pandas. Now, if you haven't got pandas installed, just do pip install pandas. It will get everything for you. And then we want to import pandas as pd. This is just the sort of standard way of doing it. It makes it easier to work with. Now, to get that data from this CSV file, bear in mind that this CSV file is in the same directory as my Py file. To get that into a data frame, which is the way that pandas works with the data, we need to give our data frame a name. Now, throughout my examples, I'm going to be using DF, but however, if you're actually using this in your project, make sure you give your data frames uh, proper names that mean something. So then we go equals, and then we just do PD for pandas, and we do read csv and we give it the csv file name data.csv uh, and that's it so we've now that is basically importing that whole csv file into a data frame that we can work with now there's so many more but there's so many benefits to doing it like this over trying to work with it in excel basically we can do so much more uh, so many more rows and don't have self issues and we can just automate things uh, and i'll show you as we go along so one of the first things that you may want to do is to actually check the data out. So I'm going to go ahead and print df.head, df of course being the data frame name that we've given it here. If we run that, we'll see that we get the sort of top rows of the data frame. Now the head is actually the default of five rows, uh, but you can kind of get an idea of what's going on here. Now I can see that we have this ID here and an extra index. Now if you don't want that extra index, you just say that the index Col for index column is equal to, and in this case, I'm going to set it to the ID. So now if I save and run again, we can see, I know it's gone slightly off the screen. I'll make it one smaller. There we go. We can see we now, we now have the ID is the column as the index, which is a bit more useful for us in that case. We can also see what's at the bottom by doing dot tail, and this will show us the last five rows of the of the data frame there, we've got those. Now one thing that you could quite conceivably want to know is all of the column names. You can see that we don't have them all showing here when we print out, and that's just because of the size of the text. But if you've got large files, you might wanna know the column names, and this will lead into our next point because we're gonna actually rearrange the columns in this data frame uh, so we can sort of manipulate it a bit more. So let's do for C in df.columns. Let's print C and I'll run this and we can see that it's showing us all of the columns down here that are available in this file. Now you can see dates just being cut off the top there. There we go. The important thing here is df.columns. So we could put this into a list and we could call it our C is equal to uh, list and let's use the df.columns here and then let's print our list out. So this gives us it's in a list form, there we go. Now, if you want to rearrange the file or have uh, maybe remove some of the columns, the easiest way to do that, I find, is just to copy this out and let's, let's uh, get rid of this actually now. And let's put these in here and let's just call these the columns. Uh, actually, I'll call it something else. Um, data calls and we'll paste our list in there. Now to rearrange it, you basically just want to rearrange this list. I'm just gonna make this a bit more friendly to see here. 
Um, and what you can do then is you can just rearrange the order of this list as you need it to, to actually rearrange the way the uh, columns appear in the, in the data frame. So if you had a file like this, and maybe you've got two or three of these files, or however many, and part of your job was to basically reorder them so they fitted into your data input type, you could get pandas to do that for you really quickly and really easily. So let's move currency to the end, make sure we have our comma in there because this is a list, and let's move the email address to being up the top here. There we go, and let's remove that. And now what we want to do is I'm going to collapse this list just so it's out of the way. We want to actually create a new data frame. Now you don't have to do this, you can do in place if you want to actually just override your data frame. But sometimes I like to actually create a new one separately so we've still got the old one that we can reference if we need to. And in this case, I'm just going to overwrite it. So I'm going to say df is equal to df.reindex. And I'm going to say our columns that we want to give this new data frame is equal to the data columns that we put here. So what it's doing is it's basically just going to create another data frame. But in this case, we're using the same name, so it's probably going to it's going to override it. And we want to use these columns in this order. So now, if I was to print df dot head again, and I'll do it above this as well. Let's close this terminal down so it's clearer. We'll get the first one, uh, which has the ID again. This is kind of a bit squiff on my screen. There we go. ID, date, etc. And there we have the currency at the end where we put it. And the email is now there where we put it. So that's a nice and easy way just to reorder the columns of your data frame. So another thing that you might want to do is you might want to say, well, I don't need all of this data. I only need these columns and I don't, I can just get rid of them. Now you can drop columns from a data frame if you want to, that's absolutely fine. But sometimes I find it easier just to do it a slightly different way. So we're going to just going to remove this bit of data here, all of this chunk in the middle, and we're going to create a new data frame with this part of the data only. Now to do that, we're just going to remove this. I'm going to say my new data frame. Again, you could just do DF again to override it if you wanted to, but I'm going to do new data frame is equal to, and then we just say DF and then our data columns. So all we're doing is we're saying, let's create a new data frame using the information from this one, which is up here that we've imported using only these columns. So now if I print the new df, excuse my typing, we'll get a new data frame here with just those columns of data that we wanted. Note that I set up here the index column still ID, which is why that's always first. If you wanted to move the ID column around, just get rid of this line and use the zero index, zero, one, two, three, four, five for the lines, the row index. So there we go. That's another easy way of doing that. So we've basically just chopped out a load of data that we don't need. But if we look at this again, we can see that the price has this dollar sign here, um, which means that it won't be uh, an integer, which means that we can't actually do anything with that data. So we want to be able to remove this dollar sign from the data frame column itself. Now to do that, we need to reference the column. So I'm going to say our new data frame price is equal to, again, new data frame price, because we're just going to overwrite it. So we want to say it's going to be equal to this now. And now we want to do dot str dot replace. Now this is going to basically do exactly what it says. It's going to replace whatever we say here with whatever we do. Okay, so it's just like um, just like the normal replace in Python. Then we give it an R and then we say what we want to replace, which is the dollar sign, a comma, and then what we want to replace it with. In this case, nothing. Now that would work. However, I'm also going to turn this column into a floating point number at the same time. So I'm going to say dot as type and it was a float. So this whole thing is basically going to just saying this column is now going to be equal to this column because we're replacing it with the same data, but we're taking away the dollar sign for nothing and we're changing it to a float. So now if I print new df dot head, we should be able to see that the dollar sign is gone and we have our price there and that's a floating point number. So the next thing that you might want to do is you might want to 
add files together. So we might have multiple file instances, like I mentioned at the start, that you might want to concatenate the whole lot together. So you can do this. It's, it works best, obviously, when you have matching columns. So if you don't quite have matching columns and you have multiple files, import them all and then uh, work the columns as I showed you before using this method here to get them into the same way and we can just basically add data frames together. So we're going to concat the data frames together but the, the data frames that we're doing are actually going to be from multiple files. So up here I'm going to do df2, again remember what I said about names, is equal to pd.readcsv and I have another one here which is called this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove this now because I don't need this, but we are going to keep this part here, but I'm just going to have it uh, commented out for the moment. So if I just say uh, con df or df concatenated, we want to do pd.concat and then open the brackets and then the square brackets and we just give it df and df2. Now if I print the uh, con df dot head so we can see what that looks like we're going to see that we just get the top lines again which is great but how do we know how many lines there are well what we can do is we can just do a length on the index because the index will always have something in it uh, this is a good way of doing it although there are other methods which may be better depending on what your data looks like so if we do the first one we say uh, let's print the length of the first data frame dot index that should be 1000 lines. There it is. And then if we do it with the data frame that we have concatenated the DF1 and DF2 together, we can see that we actually have 2000 lines now, which means we've pushed them all together into one data frame, which you could then export or do with whatever you wanted to. So I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna move this new DF under here. and I'm going to change it to equal the concatenated data frame. So we're now going to have both of these two together. There we go and put that in there. And we're going to have all the data together, which is our 2000 lines uh, without the with the price corrected. So let's just check that. So let's print the uh, concatenated DF dot head and you can put a number in here if you want to. I'll do 10 this time so we get the top 10 lines. And we should hopefully get the price here. There we go. We can see just at the end, just behind my head. There you can see they're just appearing up like we did with removing the dollar sign and changing it to a floating point number. The next thing which is possibly going to be the most important is a pivot table. So that's a very common Excel thing that you need to do. Create a pivot table so you can sort of summarize your data a bit better. So I'm going to show you how to do that in Pandas. And as you can tell by all of this, it's going to be just as simple. All we're going to do is we're going to create a new data frame. So, you know, if you think like how when you pivot on Excel, it opens it up in a separate sheet. We're kind of doing the same sort of thing, except there's no sheets. We're just creating a new data frame. So I'm just going to call this pivot is equal to. And then we do pd.pivot table. And we give it our data frame. So we're going to be using the CONDF in this case. Now we need to specify the index and the values that we want to pivot onto. So I'm going to say our index is equal to, and let's pivot onto the size. So we saw that we had those size, those size values in our sheet. So let's do size. And now we need to give it some values. So our values is going to be quantity. Uh, and then we need to basically say how we want to summarize it. So basically in, in Excel, you get the choice of counts, uh, uh, sum and all that stuff. Now to do that, we, did, we do need to import NumPy. That's nice and easy. And if you've installed Pandas, you get NumPy installed as well. So, so I'm gonna do import NumPy as NP. Again, this is just a standard, a nice easy way of summarizing, of writing it down to make it easier. So all we do now is ag func is equal to mp.sum. So this line basically is just creating a new pivot, a new pivot table in this data frame that I'm calling pivot with the index of size and the values of quantity and the, and the, uh, the function we're using is the sum. So, uh, mp.sum. So if I just print, print our pivot table out now, 
I can type. We'll see that we get it down here. So this is basically the sizes of all of the data from both of the sheets. So if you were to do this manually, let's say you had to do this task a couple of times a week or once a week, but there was more sheets, you'd have to open each one, copy and paste the data over onto one big one and then pivot it. In this, we've just basically reading them into data frames and we've done it in, well, a few lines of code. Now you can actually change this index and value. So let's make that a bit more interesting. So let's say country, so we can split it up by country as well. So we're gonna have our index is gonna be country and then size in that order. And our values are gonna be, let's put this into a list as well. Quantity, let's leave it at that for now. So let's print that and we'll get the country first and then the size split. Uh, if you put these the other way around, you'll see that you get them the other way around essentially. So you can have, you'll get all the sizes and then the country split, just like you would when you order it in Excel, when you move it up and down. I want it the other way around though. So I'm gonna put that here, country first and then size. And I'm gonna do quantity and then price. Now, because we did this, this will work. Let's run it. So you can see that that is the sum of all of the price as well there. Um, obviously the values are nonsense because I'm using fake data, but we get that on that way too. So if I was to actually remove this line um, of the changing that, we're going to get a, an error here because obviously you can't, you can't, uh, you can't summarize in a sum function this without the without removing the side of the line because it's a string otherwise. And obviously you could mess around and you could put whichever data you wanted in here, just like you do in Excel. So the next thing and the final thing that we're going to be looking at is doing a VLOOKUP. Now this is obviously again a really common thing in Excel. So I have another data sheet here that I've got that I'm going to import. I'm going to call it refs. It's equal to again it's a CSV file. And it's going to be, I think I called it references, references.csv. So let's keep our pivot, but let's do that. Let's just print out our refs data frame for now. And we'll see that I have an ID which matches, which we're going to match against, and then a reference, um, just a random code string here. So what is what could be quite common that you may want to do is you might want to VLOOK up into your data first. So then you have that available to you. Maybe you don't have the country and you need to put that in or maybe whatever, whatever reason. So what we can do to do that is we need to use df.merge. Now to merge the two together, there are a few different types. So there's a left, a left merge. It's very similar to SQL queries. There's a left merge, there's an inner and then there's an outer, which is a right. And you need to specify which one. So there is a real Python uh, article here, which I'll show you, which summarizes the joins quite well. And you can see that when you have your data frame one, you wanna do your left join and that joins the two like that. Uh, I'll link to this article down below, but this kind of makes it uh, a bit more easy to understand what I'm doing. So if we go back to our code, we basically want to do our merge. So I'm gonna call this merged is equal to, because that's we're creating a new data frame that's gonna have all the data on. Now, the first one we wanna do is our data frame one. So that's going to be our condf, because that's the one that we're gonna put those references onto. And then we do dot merge. And then inside our first bracket is the refs, because those that's where the data that we're taking. So we're gonna VLOOK up that data onto the first, the first data frame. Now we wanna do how is equal to left, because I want to do a left join. I want to join from my refs onto our condf, cond uh, and if there are isn't if their matching values aren't there, it will just show that they aren't there. And then we want to do how uh, sorry uh, on is equal to id on equal to id because this is the column that we're going to be matching. So now if I print our merged dot head, and I'm going to say let's do twenty five rows we should get some matched data so there we go so we can see that we've got our id here and then the reference that it has matched from the second sheet so we've successfully vlook up that reference onto this sheet and again as i showed you how you can move columns around earlier you could do that too 
So let's just move some of this up. Now the last thing that you want to do is you want to export your new data that you've just worked all the way through and you want to save it to a new file. Now that's really easy in pandas. All you need to do is let's do merge first is you take the name and then you do dot two CSV or two Excel or whatever you want to do. And then we'll give it a name and we'll just call this one merged dot CSV. Now if I run this, it's going to give us no output because we're not printing any. But if we come to our file manager here, we have our merged CSV, which has all of the information on it. It's going to have uh, 2000 lines and we can see the references at the end there. And if we scroll all the way down, we can see down here, we have no references because they did not match any. I think we found, oh, there's one there that that matched. So you see where it didn't match any, it um, didn't add it on and that's because we did that left join. If we did an inner join, we would only get the ones that where it matched, which can also be useful for you. Um, it just so happens is that matches are all the top because the, the references that match the IDs are actually from the first data frame. So there you go. So that's going to do it for this one. Hopefully you found it useful. Drop me a comment down below, like the video, etc, etc. Thank you very much for watching. I've been John and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.